Have you ever thought to yourself, I wish they would just say what they mean and mean what they say and feeling kind of confused and fatigued and a bit angry with veiled, indirect, passive aggressive communication and behavior? Well, I know I have. This video is the second in a three part series around the topic of passive aggression. And in this video, I am going to share with you my insights in how to take off that veil and deal with others who are communicating passive aggressively. I'm Karen Valencic. I am the author and founder of Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace. And I have worked with leaders and teams for three decades in the area of collaboration and conflict mastery. So let's get on with it here. In the first video in this series, I identified three separate buckets of passive aggressive behavior. And I am going to address each of those separately. But first, there are two things I highly recommend you put at the top of your list in your personal development. The first of those is to create a centering practice. That's where you have a really solid foundation. You become the calm eye in the storm of the world. In my martial arts practice, that's where we find our balance and our power and our strength. And that can be accessed in a number of ways. One, which is starting a breathing practice. And I'm not going to go through great detail in this particular video on that. Please look in the description below. I have an audio practice that you can download that's strengthening your center while you're driving. And I go into more detail on that. So check the description. The second aspect of yourself I highly recommend developing is getting really clear on your values based intention. What are your values as you move through the world that are important to you? For me, it's to honor myself and others. That's something I take into all my situations. And it's something that really augments my centering practice. So in the future, the more you have developed that aspect of yourself, the more you're able to deal with these passive aggressive things. And you might even see them entirely different. So keep that in mind. Every relationship, every communication is always very nuanced. So you always have to look at the setting that it's in, the ability of the people that are involved to be able to communicate. I encourage you to revisit uh, the first video in this series where I also dive into why do people do this type of behavior. Let's dive into those three types of passive aggressive behavior. I put them in buckets. The first bucket is withdrawal. And withdrawal is when somebody just disappears and they won't, they won't respond to anything. That is really disconcerting if you're like me. You want to know, you want to have that connection. But sometimes people need some space to work things out. I think they should let you know that and not just disappear is my personal opinion. And in this time of virtual communication and remote work, it's very easy for people to withdraw. What can you do? There's two things I suggest. One is avoid filling in the bucket with assumptions about what's going on. So often when we don't have any communication, we make up things. And almost 100% of the time that I have done that, I have been wrong. So don't drive yourself crazy trying to figure it out. Practice centering. Know that at some point you're going to know the answer to that question. The other thing to do is to reach out to them however you can and let them know that you are there, you care about them, and you want to listen. Make sure you make it about you wanting to listen to them not that you want to tell them something because if they withdrew, they probably aren't feeling like there's an opening for them to communicate. That's really all you can do. Now, if this is a work situation, that's a pretty, um, pretty risky place to be in if you're an employee to just withdraw. Bucket number two is when you're in person and somebody subtly puts you down, they one up you, they make jokes, they are kidding, but they're cutting you down in some way or somebody you care about in some way. And that is probably some of the hardest to deal with. And that again is why centering is so important because when you get really centered, you're more present and you're more able to 
really respond in the moment to that. I'm going to give you a couple examples. The first one is, is that you, you perform some kind of task or speech or something and someone says, wow, you did that a lot better than I thought you would. Now there's a classic passive aggressive comment. So what do you do with that? Well, you know, if you're really an evolved person, you can just let that roll off of you. But if you're not quite there yet, which most people aren't, you want to bring it up and put the light on it. Take the veil off the comment and say, gosh, tell me more about that. You didn't think that I would do very well. I'd like to know more about that so I can learn. Taking their comment and putting it back to them so that they can explain it better to you. What happens when you do that is they won't do that much anymore. Another example, many years ago I was talking with a marketing person and she made a comment about my website being way too purple. And it was really kind of oddly presented to me. And it also seemed odd at the time because I didn't think there was that much purple on my website. Anyway, she said that I really didn't feel great about that comment and I actually didn't go on to do any work with her. Then I find out her website is nothing but purple. Purple is her favorite color and she even then dyed her hair purple. And so she was Mrs. Purple. <laughs> So when she made that comment, which felt like a put down to me, what she was really doing was making a, a funny remark about herself. But I didn't know that. And so she lost a potential client because of that. Those veiled communications are really bad idea on either side. The third bucket is when you're talking about somebody behind their back, they are not present. If you are the listener, you are just as guilty as the person talking if you don't do anything. First thing, I think that's bad form always. But second thing is if you're there and somebody's talking smack about somebody, there's two things I suggest you do. One is make a positive comment about the person that is being talked about. Make it honest, but make it positive. And then two, say, have you talked directly to him, her, or they about this situation. And if they say no, then just say, then please don't talk about it in front of me. I suggest that you go talk to them directly about it. You might offer to assist them, but you don't have to do that. But you just nix that so that it just stops. And what happens is then people won't be doing that with you anymore. So those are my tips in terms of how to unveil passive aggressive behavior and communication. I'd love your questions and comments in the, the remarks below this video. The third part in this series is about how to nix passive aggressive behavior on a team. And that's really, really important. So thanks for hanging in here with me. And until next time, thank you very much. Bye-bye.